Network with Appling's name and a blue steel semi-automatic Beretta loaded with 10 live rounds. Appling already has two upcoming trials on gun charges. He was arrested June 18th following a traffic stop. Police say he was carrying a concealed weapon in his vehicle. That's a felony. He was also arrested in May in the parking lot of a Dearborn club for possession of a loaded firearm in his vehicle. Last year, Appling played a handful of games for the NBA's Orlando Magic, but that career is likely over with the threat of prison on the horizon. Now, the details of what happened here last night are details from the police report. We have not heard Keith Appling's side of the story yet. For now, he remains in custody. Uh, police still have to present their evidence to the prosecutor. That could happen tomorrow, and he'll be arraigned on these charges. Kimberly and Devin, back to you. Well, Steve, is there any indication why he took off? Well, of course, we haven't heard from Keith, but I spoke with his attorney, uh, Cyril Hall, just really about five minutes ago, and he said he wants to make it clear this was not a, a pursuit, this was not running from police. He says it was, let's call it an aggressive conversation between Keith and the police. He felt some fear for his safety, so he wanted to drive, which, according to his attorney, he did at a slow speed to a place here where there were more people around, and then he pulled over, and that's when the rest of the, uh, the arrest happened. Uh, coincidentally enough, his attorney says the two officers last night are the same two officers that pulled him over in June. Mm. So he has some questions about that coincidence. So there are lots of questions yet to be answered here, and that will happen in the coming months. Yep, well, we know you'll keep us posted, Steve. We appreciate it. Troy police are now looking for the gunman who opened fire on a driver and his pregnant passenger, causing them to crash. Happened around 1.30 this morning on Woodward and Palmer. Police believe the 25-year-old victim was trying to drive himself to Detroit Receiving Hospital after being shot. Instead, he crashed and later died. His passenger, a woman six and a half months pregnant, is now recovering. So far, there have been no arrests made. Well, the oppressive humidity that we were feeling uh, seems to have let up just a bit compared to yesterday. Yeah, but the question is, will it continue as we inch closer and closer to Labor Day weekend? For that answer, let's check in with uh, Ben. How's it going? Hey, yeah, uh, Kim and Devin. Yeah, we've got a big weekend. Arts, Beats and Eats coming uh, as we head into Labor Day. But there is some humidity just off to the west. You can see sort of this mountain of humidity out here uh, that's got to go through us first before we get the dry stuff. And that's going to be coming in for the second half of the week. So there are some big changes on the horizon here. The temperatures over the next seven days, those will dip to their lowest numbers here on Thursday in the 70s and then start ramping back up as we head towards uh, Labor Day weekend. Average highs this time of year right around 80, but how much of this is going to be wet? We will look at our rain chances and, of course, your four zone forecast all coming up in a few minutes. Devin. All right, ben. The deplorable conditions exposed inside Detroit Public Schools led to widespread outrage last school year. Who could forget the mold in the ceilings? Uh, window sills, duct tape shut because they wouldn't close properly, and the mushrooms that were growing inside of the elementary school. Well, today, DPS and the City of Detroit reporting what they call significant progress in fixing the laundry list of issues. Let's bring in Guy Gordon. School starts next week, Guy. It's a critical issue. One week from tomorrow, Devin, and we've got some good news about that progress that's been made, according to Mike Duggan. Uh, basically, this is the Bates Academy inspection reports. They're talking about uh, classrooms that are cold in the winter, hot in the spring. Leaky windows, leaky roofs. Also, there were frequent blackouts. Well, now, after eight months and two and a half million dollars, most of those violations that were disclosed by teachers and confirmed in these inspections have been corrected. Those windows leaked. Now they're better. And Mrs. Turner's classroom has new heating and cooling and also a new smart board. We don't have those issues anymore. The children are doing much better. It's just easy to learn when you're in a comfortable environment. 400 inspections turned up violations like these, including rodents, mold, health violations. According to the city, the district stepped up and worked nights and weekends to correct them. As of today, 86 of 94 schools, or 91%, are 100% compliant with city codes, but the city is still keeping an eye. And so we are keeping the website up uh, where teachers, staff, or parents can report anything they see that they believe is a violation of the building code. The remaining eight schools with larger construction issues should be completed by September's end. The new district has 10 million set aside for long delayed maintenance but that's 50 million less than needed. More than once I've had a conversation with the governor about the fact that we still need that $50 million. It, the, the needs are still here. Enrollment forecasts show a 1.2% decline, but with these improved conditions, 
district leaders are hoping parents will come back. When I send my child to school, I want to talk to them about education, about listening, not about whether or not they can drink out of the water fountain. And by the way, talking about those drinking fountains, the Children's Hospital Foundation funded a study district-wide to look at elevated lead levels in schools. 21 schools turned up with at least one, maybe two fixtures that had lead levels that were too high. That now has been 100% corrected district-wide, all schools, all 94 getting a clean bill of health. Of those eight schools that still have significant work to be done, we've put them on our website at clickondetroit.com. We're live from Detroit's West Side. I'm Guy Gordon, Local 4. Back to you. All right, Guy. Well, the actor who became a star in several Mel Brooks comedies has died. Sad day. Gene Wilder made his mark in movies like The Producers, Young Frankenstein, Blazing Saddles, Silver Streak. I could go on and on. Played many children's favorites as well, including Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Of course. He reduced his acting work after the death of his wife, actress Gilda Radner, of course, the Detroiter. Uh, Gene Wilder died today in Connecticut from complications of Alzheimer's disease. He was 83 years old yeah, and he, one of a kind. You see him there teamed up with Richard Pryor, Richard Pryor. for quite a oh, few no, uh, no. funny ones, too. Just a comedic genius. He really was. <laughs> Nobody like him. Two Pontiac children left terrified after a man breaks into their home and goes on a rampage. New tonight what he was after and why that was just part of what turned out to be a wild chain of events. Hank? Labor Day deals revealed one big ticket item you may want to buy right now and you could save a lot of money. I'm Hank Winchester. The Consumer Alert is new tonight. And the makers of EpiPen make a big move to settle controversy over a 400% price hike. But is it too little too late? What the company is now planning to do in hopes of putting that scandal behind them next. In the new at six. Another key player in the saga of white boy Rick Wershey is talking about Friday's bombshell from prosecutor Kim Worthy. You'll hear what Mike Duggan, who of course once fought to keep Wershey behind bars, will hear what he has to say about Worthy, Worthy's new stance on the case. That's at six. Well, the company that sells EpiPens now says it's launching a generic version of the life-saving drug. The move comes after a public outcry over the 400 percent spike in the cost of EpiPens. Karen Drew joins us now with more on whether or not this is going to be enough to end the criticism. And there's a lot of different viewpoints on that, yeah. Devin and Kimberly. Mylan, the maker of EpiPens, says the generic will be listed at $300. Now that is half the cost of the brand name EpiPen. Until it clicks. Mylan's CEO released a statement reading in part that the generic will offer a long-term solution to further reduce costs and ease the burden and complexity of the process on the patient. Some pharmacists are weary, saying they'll believe it when they actually see the price fall. I'm glad they're uh, potentially lowering the price, but even at $300, it's, it's still very expensive. Mylan's generic auto injector will be identical to the brand name product, and pharmacists will be able to swap in the generic if doctors write a prescription for EpiPen. EpiPens deliver an emergency dose of epinephrine when people suffer dangerous allergic reactions. Just last week in Tucson, Arizona, a school nurse used one on a high school senior when he had a few bites of a friend's lunch, not realizing he was eating peanuts. My throat closing, my cheeks getting puffy, my lip was getting bigger. The generic EpiPen is expected to launch in a few weeks. Now, other companies are seeking FDA approval for generic versions of EpiPens. This particular one will not need special FDA approval since it is exactly the same product as what's already on the market. So one will be made for 600 and one will be made for 300. By the same company. And yeah. they're basically in competition with themselves. With themselves. It just right. doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah. <laughs> and then like we were mentioning, you know, back in 2007, it was $100. Right. So, I mean, the right. price has yeah. really jumped. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And the bonuses, though, kept yeah. clicking in. Yeah. Yep. All right, Karen. Thank you, Karen. A bonus for Ben today. After clearing out the Well, lovely. thank you. Oh, because okay. yes, let a me arrange lot of that. people think I shouldn't have gotten no. paid all, all month <laughs> after what we went through. Uh, but you know what? Uh, we are getting towards the start, at least the technical or traditional start, start of, of, of fall. Fall, yeah. yeah. So are you team summer or are you team fall? I'm definitely team summer. A team summer, but yeah. fall is beautiful. Around it is. Here too. Blah, <laughs> so. blah, blah. Three to one. <laughs> no, I'm on my it is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at the satellite picture because we had some fog this morning and you can see it sort of burn off at least uh, in our western zone early this morning. That's the little area of white that just sort of went poof uh, just after the sun came up. Tomorrow morning I think we'll see something similar. 
uh, as we get some patchy fog in here. But you can see there's not much to look at those satellite wise until you get out here west of Chicago. You can see the height on these clouds. There are some showers and storms out there, but believe it or not, we've got one chance of rain between now and Labor Day. That's it. We've got a mainly dry forecast for the next seven. A weird 83 right now. These numbers probably going up just a little bit tomorrow and the humidity goes up too, but then we'll see some big changes as uh, we head towards Wednesday of this week. So high pressure is exiting as that moves out. We do get a little bit more of a southerly flow and that's going to help the heat and humidity build tomorrow by the afternoon hours on Tuesday. I still think that that cold front is going to be far enough away that I don't think that we're going to see much in the way of wet weather. However, this model is trying to show it. Uh, it'll probably be closer to the west side of the state, probably further north uh, than what we're showing here. But nevertheless, Tuesday night into Wednesday, there is a chance we could get a scattered shower. Probably not going to be a lot as far as the moisture goes. And that's it behind that front dry conditions. High pressure sets in again, but this time with much lower humidity, even cooler temperatures. In fact, we won't be getting out of the 70s for Wednesday through the end of the work week. Four zone forecast a little bit different tonight as we look at those low temperatures. They are going to be in the 60s. Humidity has been noticeable today, and that's the way we're going to wake up tomorrow morning. And again, probably increasing a little bit as we head towards the daylight hours. Lows down in our south zone around 60 degrees in Blissfield. Tecumseh, you're going to be at the same mark north of Michigan Avenue in our west zone a lot around right around 60 degrees for our low temperatures 62 in Milford Novi and Canton as you get closer to 275 and there will be some 50s in our north zone but barely now uh, we're talking 58 59 up around Marlette Sandusky Yale uh, Emily City and then uh, closer to M59 that's where we're going to see those low 60s by the time we wake up tomorrow so forecast highs tomorrow go to 85 that is going to be by far our warmest temperature that we've got this week coming. A lot of sunshine to start, then we'll see a few clouds start to build in the afternoon. So after those morning showers take off on Wednesday, it is dry from there through Labor Day weekend. Now notice the temperatures go up, but we really are not going to see a big spike in humidity. So Saturday, Sunday, Monday, if you're going to be out for Arts, Beats and Eats, fantastic weather. A lot going nice. on. Jazz Fest, everything. Yeah, yeah that's right. right. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, Frank? Right. Zika fears are hitting home for one Michigan native. We're just going to do everything. It's just not worth the risk. Coming up, see the drastic decision this expectant mom and her husband are making to protect their baby from the Zika virus. And the moment they knew, it was the only thing to do. But first, chaos at LAX. How a man in a Halloween costume may have sent hundreds of travelers running. That's next. Turkey Hill. Well, things are getting back to normal at Los Angeles International Airport after false reports of gunfire led to chaotic evacuations. The chaos and confusion erupted at the airport Sunday night. Nervous passengers were seen running for cover. But after an extensive search through the airport, police found there was no active shooter or shots fired. Police did, however, detain a man who was dressed as Zorro. It's not clear if he played a role in the incident. Well, it's a nuisance that's facing drivers. That sinkhole in Royal Oak still there, and crews continue to make their repairs on it. But the sinkhole opened up Friday. Uh, this is northbound Main Street, north of 12 Mile. Officials say the collapse was caused by a break in a gas line, but today the repairs continued. Not done yet. Bargain shoppers know the Labor Day holiday can be a good time to save some money. So the question is, how do you save as much money as possible? Consumer investigator Hank Winchester looks at what to buy and what not to buy this weekend. Let's begin with a big ticket item. Shopping experts telling me Labor Day has been called the Black Friday for car shopping. 2017 models that are arriving, dealers need to make room. So look for good prices on 2016 models and also competitive financing. Also right now, a good time to look for hot deals on anything summer related. Swimsuits, summer clothing, Gap and Nordstrom have been known to offer up to 80% off as they make way for fall inventory. Also right now, you can look for deals on outdoor furniture. We're talking about patio furniture, also grills right now. The prices on grills will continue to fall through the month of October. On the other hand, Labor Day is not a very good time to buy different items uh, if you're looking for winter clothing. If you see items that are on sale, well, those prices will probably be better right after Columbus Day. And don't be tempted to buy items right now for Halloween. I know some of the stores are already rolling out that inventory. Instead, you may wanna wait until after October 15th. That's when stores start switching over 
to Christmas inventory. We have posted all the information regarding these deals. You'll find it along with shopping advice on the Help Me Hank page of ClickOnDetroit.com. I'm Hank Winchester. Back to you. New at 530. Ford Arts Beats and Eats is just around the corner and we're focused on the eats, how you can donate to help families in need. Donald Trump making a couple of big changes to his campaign, but sounding like classic Donald Trump on the issue of Anthony Weiner, the texting husband of Hillary Clinton's top aide. I'm Steve Handles. That story's coming up. Two brothers ages 10 and 15 are home alone. Then all of a sudden, a man kicks in their front door. But by the time the sheriff's department arrives, there becomes a whole new twist to the story. I'll break it all down coming up on Local 4 at 5.30. We would like Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5.30 starts now. A robber wasn't going to let children get in his way to break in, and that's not all he's accused of doing. An Oakland County Sheriff's deputy was also injured while trying to arrest that suspect. Yep, this happened Saturday night in Pontiac. Let's bring in Jermont Terry, uh, who has more on what the mother of those kids is saying about it. Jermont? Yeah, Devin, this mother is frightened. I can tell you her children were home alone when all of a sudden someone broke down the front door. Her kids were rightfully scared, so they hid while this man ransacked the house. It turns out the man breaking in was their mother's ex-boyfriend. Two smashed flat screens sit on the curb outside the house on Coon Street. These TVs are just a few of the items a Pontiac man is accused of destroying. On Saturday, two brothers ages 10 and 15 frantically called 911 after someone kicked in the front door. Their mother tells me they locked themselves in the bedroom while the man ransacked the house. The Oakland County Sheriff arrived just as the man was leaving. It prompted a short pursuit. Deputies say the man resisted, assaulted an officer, forcing them to tase the man. This is the first time I've ever known my son to do this. Lanny Wilms is the mother of the 35-year-old arrested. Her son awaits charges. It turns out the house he's accused of breaking into and destroying belongs to his ex-girlfriend. The boy's mother, too frightened to go on camera, but she tells me her boys were fearful of their lives. I don't uphold wrong, especially when it comes down to the children. You know what I'm saying? I mean, these children, according to the mother, locked themselves in, in the In the closet. In the closet. Yeah. This is what was told to me. They were that afraid. You know what I'm saying? That afraid of your son. Of my son, you know. And this appears to all stem from a broken heart. He's in love with this girl right here, and he's got a... A little jealousy in it. The Oakland County Sheriff's Office says the suspect's rage ensued once they caught him. He's accused of kicking a deputy during the arrest. And thankfully, that deputy was not seriously injured. We do know that this Pontiac man remains in jail tonight. The ex-girlfriend tells me she hopes he stays there because she has no plans of getting back into a relationship with him, especially after this scary stunt. Reporting live, Jermont Terry, Local 4. Yeah, all right, Jermont.